In this video, we'll look at an example of determining if a system of differential equations is Hamiltonian. We have our system here. dx dt is x cosine y minus 2y, and dy dt is 2x minus sine of y. And we want to look at if this system is Hamiltonian. So to do that, we want to recall that the definition was that a system is Hamiltonian if dx dt is minus partial h partial y, and dy dt is partial h partial x for some function h of x, y. Now we can check this in a few ways. One way is by trying to find the function h. The other is by, so differentiate each of these in the opposite variable, see if they match. Because a theorem from Calc 3 says that if I take two derivatives in x and then y, it's the same thing as if I look at derivative y and then derivative in x. So if I look at the partial derivative in x of dx dt from above, this will give me just cosine of y. If I take this function, differentiate in x, the only thing I see is this, becomes a cosine y, and that's my answer. If I look at the derivative in y of dy dt, that gets me a negative cosine of y, which is good because I ignored this minus sign here, which means that these two then match taking another derivative. This should be Hamiltonian. Well, let's do this the other way as well. Let's look for the function h that's going to be the Hamiltonian for this system. How do we do that? We want to sort of build h out of this information. Let's start here. If dy dt is partial h partial x, that means that for our setup here, partial h partial x is 2x minus sine of y. I can integrate both sides in x here to get that h should be x squared minus x sine of y, but then I have plus my constant plus c, but in this case, this is any function of y because my derivative here was a derivative in x. I differentiate this in x for any function a of y, I get back to this function here. Now I want to take this and match it up with the other equation that I had. Then we then look at negative partial h partial y, which should match dx dt. Minus partial h partial y, which is derivative of sine is cosine, so negative x cosine of y plus a prime of y. And I want this to match dx dt, which from above was x cosine y minus 2y. So we see that these two terms here match up because it's actually minus sign out front here. And I'm left with the fact that a prime of y equals 2y. So a of y is y squared. And plugging that back into here gives me that my Hamiltonian is x squared plus y squared minus x sine of y. And now what this tells me is it tells me the trajectories of this system because functions that solve this will obey x squared plus y squared minus x sine of y equals c for some value of c depending on the initial condition. Now. We'll look at some graphs of this in a second, but let's do a linearization type analysis on this first to see what we come up with. So I go back to the equation. If I want to find equilibrium solutions here, I can see, so just by inspection, that I'm going to have one at 0, 0. That 0, 0, everything here is 0, and everything here is 0. You can verify with some other work that that's actually the only equilibrium solution here. So let's do linearization around that point and see what we get. So our Jacobian here will be, which it looks like this. And now if I plug in my points here, I'm plugging in 0, 0, cosine of 0 is 1. And with the matrix 1 minus 2, 2 minus 1. I can look for eigenvalues and eigenvectors here. This gets me a lambda squared plus 3 equals 0. So lambda is plus or minus 3i. This is a center. So it's stable, but that means I don't know anything about what's going to happen to the nonlinear version. 
because it could be anything, because I know what happens from the center. However, because it's Hamiltonian, I know I can't have sources or sinks. That's a property of Hamiltonian systems. So this is something that looks like a center for this as well. However, for this linear system, I would get ellipses around the origin. We'll see something a little bit different for the nonlinear version. So here's a Desmos graph of what that trajectory would look like. From the linear version, we would have gotten ellipses around the origin, and now we think it's a little more of a weird shape. I can change the value here of C to move this in or out, so at 10 it's here. If I put in 30, it's way out here and looks even more wobbly. If I put it in really close to zero, like say at one, it looks more like an ellipse. And so as you bring this in closer and closer to the origin, you get things that are more and more elliptical that look more and more like the solution to the linear problem. And so it looks like I can plot a bunch of these all at once, and you get a collection that looks something like this. So for different initial conditions, we know that the solution will stay on one of these curves and trace it out around the origin forever and ever. It's not quite an ellipse, it's sort of a weird wobbly shape the further out you go, but that's the change you get from the non-linearity of this system. You don't get nice simple ellipses anymore, you get some weird wobbly shapes because things are non-linear, that changes how things look. So that's the process of finding if a system's Hamiltonian, as well as how you might go and find trajectories for a system like that, to see what's going to happen over time to a non-linear system like this, but it ends up being Hamiltonian.